Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six practice problems review is on unit five, lesson eight, calculating products of decimals. It's our culminating lesson with all the work we've been doing with multiplying decimals. So here is an unfinished calculation of 54 hundredths times three and eight tenths and a 54 hundredths by three and eight tenths rectangle. Which part of the rectangle has an area of uh, 432 thousandths? Which part of the rectangle has an area of 1 and 62 hundredths? Well, the smaller part is actually the smaller number, four, uh, 432 thousandths. And the bigger part is going to be here, the bigger number in this case, which is 1 and 62 hundredths. And where are these coming from? It's a great question, huh? Now, when we took 8 tenths times that 54 hundredths, that's when we got this 400 uh, and 32 thousandths. And so that's where that's coming in. When we took the three and multiplied it by the 54 hundredths, that's when we got one and 62 hundredths. And so there's my reasoning and there's my showing it. And what is then 54 hundredths times three and eight tenths? Well, we can take the 432 thousandths and add it to our 1 and 62 hundredths. And when we add, we get 2, 5, 10, and then 2. 2 and 52 thousandths is our solution. Explain how the product of 3 and 65 could be used to find 3 hundredths times 65 hundredths. Let's start off by just multiplying 65 and 3. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. And then 3 times 60 is 180. When I add that up, I get 195. Now, obviously that's not our answer here. We have three hundredths and 65 hundredths. Well, when I multiply that together, I'm looking at Ten thousandths, because a hundred times a hundred is ten thousand. If I have ones, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, I have then one hundred ninety-five ten thousands, and filling in those zeros, and so we have one hundred ninety-five ten thousands as our solution. Now, let's make sure we understand what was going on here. We took 65 and multiplied by 3 and used the partial products method to get to 195, 195 that is. And then we looked at the place value of what was actually taking place. This was in the 100 spot, so was 65 hundredths. Meaning we ended up moving, if you will, I don't like that word, but we ended up from 3 tenths to 3 our decimal went two spots to the right. From 65 hundredths to 65, our decimal went two spots to the right. And that's represented by the one hundredths there. So we had a total of four being moved to the right. Now to come back from 195 to our final answer, we have to go four spots to the left. And that's what's really taking place here when we're counting these things as we're looking at the place value and, and, and what's going on there. So 195 ten thousandths is our solution. Use vertical calculation to find each product. We have 5 and 4 tenths and 2 and 4 tenths. Okay. 5 and 4 tenths times 2 and 4 tenths. Again, this is just one of many methods that you can use. If we look at the first part here, 4 tenths times 4 tenths, that is 16 hundredths. 
So 4 tenths times 4 tenths is 16, but hundredths. And then we have our 4 tenths times 5. Again, 4 tenths times 4 tenths was 16 hundredths. 4 tenths times 5 is going to be 20 tenths. So 20 tenths. And then we move to our 2 times 4 tenths is going to be 8 tenths. And then lastly, we have 2 times 5 is 10. And so now, lining up my place values, I can add these numbers together. 6, 9, 2, 1. 12 and 96 hundredths is our solution for A. Using a vertical calculation and our partial products method. So now if we take a look at 1 and 67 hundredths multiplied by 3 and 5 tenths. We're going to have a little bit of work to do here, aren't we? Our first question is going to be 5 tenths times, that's 7 hundredths. That's going to be 35 thousandths. And so tenths, hundredths, thousandths, 35 thousandths. Next, we have that same 5 tenths times 6 tenths. And this is going to be 30 hundredths. Oh, 30 hundredths there. And then we're going to have 5 tenths times 1, which is just 5 tenths. And so, just to summarize so far, we've done 5 tenths times 7 is 35 hundredths, 5 tenths times 6 tenths is 30 hundredths, and 5 tenths times 1 is 5 tenths. So now if we move on to the next set of numbers, we'll move on to our 3. 3 times 7 hundredths is going to be 21 hundredths. So there's our 21 hundredths. And then we'll have 3 times our 6 tenths is going to be 18 tenths, so 1.818 tenths. And then lastly, we have our, probably the easiest one to do, right? 3 times 1 is 3. And so now, if we make sure we line up our decimal points and have our place values all set to go here, filling in some zeros to line everything up. We can add this up. I look in my uh, thousandths row, is it? Five, zero, 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 zero. There's just five there. Now as I look at my hundredths row, three, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. So there's four there. Looking in my tenths row, 3 and 5 is 8, 2 is 10, 8 is 18 tenths. So an 8 carrying that teen over here to the 1s. And then lastly, we have 1, 2, plus 3 is 5. So our solution is 5 and 845 thousandths. A pound of blueberries costs $3.98, and a pound of clementines costs $2.49. What is the combined cost of 6 tenths pounds of blueberries and 1 and 8 tenths pounds of clementines? R or clementines. Well, round your answer to the nearest cent. You know, 
if we took $3.98 and we bought six-tenths of a pound of blueberries, we have to multiply this by six-tenths. Okay, well, let's go through and do this then. We're going to have six-tenths times eight-hundredths. That's going to be 48 thousandths. There's our 48 thousandths. Then we're going to have six tenths times nine tenths is 54 hundredths. And then we're going to have our six tenths times three, which is 18 tenths. So 18 tenths. Fill in our zeros here to help make sure our place values are all lined up and ready to go. Eight, eight, thirteen, and two. Now we'll wait to round until the very end, all right? Let's wait till the very end to round these. At least that's what I'll do today. <laughs> if we have two dollars and forty nine cents times now one and eight tenths. Okay, again, just great practice on some of this work here. We're going to take our eight tenths and multiply it by that nine hundredths there and get 72 thousandths. 72 thousandths. We're going to take our eight tenths and multiply by four tenths to get 32 hundredths. We're going to take 8 tenths and multiply by 2 and get 16 tenths. Next, let's take our 1 and we multiply it by the 9 hundredths. Well, that's just 9 hundredths, right? And then 1 times 4 tenths, you can see where this is hopefully going, is 4 tenths. And then lastly, 1 times 2 is 2. And so now we can line up and fill in some of these zeros for our place values. Slowly running out of room here at the bottom, but we have 2. 7, 2 is 9, plus 9 is 18. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus another 4 is 14. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And so our blueberries cost the $2.38 plus a little bit extra. Our clementines cost $4.48 plus a little extra. And so if we finish this now by decimal addition, woo! 2.388, 4 decimal point 482. We can then add these up. 8 plus 2 is 10. 8 plus 8 is 16, but with the 1 is the 17. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 4 is 8, and then 2 plus 4 is 6. And so we have a final answer here as it works out to be $6.87. And as we get into the review part of our lesson today, complete the calculations so that each shows the correct sum or difference. Well, 5 is our thousands place here. We already have a 5, so what do we add to that 5? Well, nothing. 4 plus 2 was 6, so that's good. And then as we move over to our tenths row, 1 plus what gets me to 8? About 7. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. It's one of the easier ones we've done in a while. Now, as we go on to B, a little trickier. Adding, make sure you pay attention, we're adding, what plus 2 can get me to that 1? Well, besides negative 1, which is not an option here, uh, you can add 
9 to the 2, because that's going to get you 11, so we'll have to carry the 1. Now, our final one here is 4 in our tenths place. I already have the 4, but I'm carrying this 1, so I'm going to, I'm going to, yikes, 1 plus 4 is 5. I have 5 so far. What do I need to add to get to 14 but another 9? So 1 plus 4 is 5, plus the 9 gets me to 14. Then 9 plus 1 in our 1 spot is 10. 1 plus 2 is 3. A little more difficult one there, huh? Now, pay attention. This is subtraction in C. So, as you can see, what minus 9 gets me to 8? Well, I know that 17 minus 9 gets me to 8. And so this is going to have to be a 7 here, which also means then at some point it was a 17, which means I had to borrow, huh? Well, that means this is going to have to be one bigger in our hundredth spot. What minus 0 gets me to 4 would normally be a 4, right? But I would have had to unbundle an original 5 there, right? And so that has to be a 5 there um, to start the question. That I would have had to unbundle to get a 4 to get this to be a 17. So that seems to be all set. And now 1 minus 0, well, that's going to be 1. And 6 minus 1 is 5. Question six, which has greater value? Seven and four tenths minus tenths hundred thousand, 22 ten thousandths, or seven and 39 hundredths minus tenths hundred thousands, uh, 12 ten thousandths. Yikes. Show your reasoning. Okay, let's subtract. We have our seven decimal point four. I'm going to put in one, two, three, zero. So that way when we subtract, we're subtracting and lining everything neat oops, see lining everything neatly up here now we're going to unbundle our tens place that'll be a 10 unbundling all the way down here and so 10 minus 2 is 8 9 minus 2 is 7 9 minus 0 is 9 3 minus 0 is 3 and then 7 minus 0 is 7 let's solve the next one here 7 and 39 hundredths. I have a couple zeros here at the end. Minus this 12 tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths again. Well, let's unbundle from the hundredths place. And so 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 minus 0 is 8. 3 minus 0 is 3, we have 7. And so if we line these numbers up, 7, decimal point 3, 9, 7, 8, 3,900, sorry, 3,978 ten thousands, and 7 and 3,888 ten thousands. Well, as we work our way, we're the same in the ones, we're the same in our tens, but where we get off here is in our hundreds place. 9 is bigger than 8, so... 7 and 3,978 ten thousands is our bigger value. Andre is planting saplings, baby trees. It takes him 30 minutes to plant three saplings. If each sapling takes the same amount of time to plant, how long will it take Andre to plant 14 samplings? saplings? If he gets stuck, consider using a table. Well, we have a table here, so it might not be stuck, but let's use it. Let's get down to one. How long does it take them for one sapling? 3 divided by 3 gets you to 1. And so if you take your 30 and you divide that by 3, you get 10 minutes. Each sapling is 10 minutes. And so if you do 14 saplings, you can multiply your 10 by 14 to get an answer of 140 minutes. And that is it for this grade 6 practice problems review on Unit 5, Lesson 8, Calculating Products of Decimals. Good luck.